Namaste, everyone. My name is Greg Prescott from In5D.com, and welcome to another version of, this is actually December 2019, of Behind the Scenes. And we're a few days past Christmas right now, and I know a lot of you have had interactions with your family, and that could lead to some either very mundane conversations or some very interesting conversations. Um, and I'll get into this a little bit later. Uh, first, I want to talk about a walk-in. Um, what happens when walk-ins occur is that your other walk-in can basically take in so much energy, so much light and vibration. And then you get another walk-in that allows you to bring in even more energy and vibration. I've had a number of walk-ins all throughout my life. My daughter and my ex-wife can specifically point to the times where I've had them as well as other people in my life. Um, so I, I do get them on occasions and uh, recently I got, got a new one. Uh, and This happened maybe about two months ago and I was even given my walk-in's name. It's Laura and it's spelled L-O-R-A uh, which I found interesting because I have two sisters, Lola and Tara. So it's like like half Lola and half Tara. Tara being, if you think of Tara as in T-E-R-R-A instead of T-A-R-A, uh, Tara being Mother Earth. Uh, so I was actually doing a, it was kind of like along the lines of a QHHT kind of thing with uh, Michelle Walling. And she got me down into this comfortable state of being where I was basically accessing uh, the alpha state and telling her what I saw. So in this, she asked me to envision Laura and what I got was I was on the beach here in Siesta Key and I was facing north and I saw the sun setting. There was clouds out and the sky was you know, beautifully lit up as, as the sun was setting. And she put one and one together, uh, saying that Lo Ra, Laura, was the sun setting. Lo Ra, Ra being the sun, Lo Ra. And that's how she came to me. Um, and the one thing that I found, this was the thing that tipped me off. A lot of times I don't even notice it. Other people will notice it more than I will. But apparently, my walk in likes swing music. Now, anyone that knows me, I've put out a lot of videos of me playing guitar, well, a few videos of me playing guitar, and I'm playing hard rock. And I still love hard rock, but for the last two months, as a matter of fact, I have it on right now, very low, probably can't even hear it, but I have, it's channel 847, and it's called Singers in Swing. I've been listening to swing music, which is basically from the 1930s, 40s, and some of the 50s. There's even some contemporary swing as well. It's a huge change for me. And I know that, for example, when Michelle and I will play Scrabble, which we do on occasion, it's fun. Good way to pass time and just forget about everything. But occasionally we play Scrabble and I'll put the swing channel on and we listen to swing while we're playing Scrabble. So that was a definitive walk-in for me, uh, this most recent one. And I'm curious if you guys have had walk-ins and have you been able to notice yourself when the walk-ins come in? Any changes and perhaps maybe you eat something differently that you've always detested in the past, but now all of a sudden you have this affinity for a certain food or in my case, uh, a certain style of music that I would never listen to before this walk-in. Could be personality traits, something different within your personality, uh, a lot of different things. Um, and for me, it's, it's not... She gave me a name, and even though I'm a dude, I don't, I don't feel any of that you know, extra boost of the divine feminine, we'll put it that way. But... Apparently, Michelle's picked up on it. So, uh, the, you know, per, perhaps I'm a little bit softer in areas that 
you know, maybe, you know, as a, as a guy, I'd be a little bit rougher on. So I'm curious if you guys have ha had those experiences with walk-ins uh, and how many you've had. I've had probably at least, I'm guessing at least seven or eight walk-ins up until this point. So I found that really interesting. So we had Christmas come and go. Speaking of low ra, um, actually Christmas is when, in astro theology, Christmas is when the sun does its movement and it stops on the Southern Cross. So that Jesus is on the cross and it stays there for three days and then it makes its progression back in the opposite direction. It's all astro theology. Matter of fact, I interviewed Jordan Maxwell and he interviewed this guy that was going for his doctorate in theology and he had complete access to the Dead Sea Scrolls. And by the time he completed his doctorate, he was so disillusioned by his findings that he became an alcoholic. And what he found was that the Bible is basically all astrotheology, and it, and it is. It's the greatest story ever told. But more so, it's, it's, it's written in perfect astrotheological order. For example, you know, the, the golden calf would be to introduce the age of Taurus, the blowing of the ram's horn, the age of Aries. When Jesus fed the masses with two fish and a loaf of bread, that's the age of Pisces. And then when Jesus said, follow the man bearing the pitcher of water to the house, blah, blah, blah. That's to introduce the age of Aquarius, which we're in right now. So it does make perfect sense to me. And also when you take into consideration all the number of deities that preceded Jesus that were born on a cross, uh, or I'm sorry, uh, born to a virgin mother, died on a cross, uh, resurrected after three days, 12 disciples, you know, it's on and on, it goes right down the list. There's like nine other deities that had virtually the same story before Jesus. So what, and none of them have came back, you know, they, none of them have resurrected again. None, none of them have came back and said, Hey, I'm, I'm here, but they keep regurgitating the same story. So it makes you question, uh, the whole origins of Christianity. And that kind of leads me into um, having conversations with friends and family, especially during the holiday season, during Christmas and New Year's or whatever, when family and friends get together, you have this awkward moment of deciding whether you're going to talk this mundane crap that you know is going to come on Christmas Day, or are you going to go down that road and kind of push the limits? and say, you know what, I think the conversation needs to change this year. That was my choice. Uh, and usually I always work in something metaphysical when I go visit my parents, because my dad is really cool. Uh, my dad listens and he questions things also. Uh, my mom, she's not really quite as ready for a lot of this information. Uh, so I can talk to my dad about anything. We had a really, really long talk that I'll get into in, in a little while. But on Christmas, I went down to my parents for two days. I went down on Christmas Day, and we had Christmas dinner together. They invited a couple friends of theirs that they go dancing with. My dad is 89. My mom is 82, I think. And... uh and they're still out dancing. I love it. It's, it's great. I'm so grateful to have my parents at their age that they're at right now. But they invited a former pastor of a church and his wife. And, you know, of course, we started out talking the idle chit chat that everyone does, the basic formalities in a conversation. And then it came time for dinner. And when I found out, that he was a former pastor, I decided to ask a few questions. 